good morning or afternoon, depending upon whenever you're seeing this. Uh, today, or I'm, I'm Andrew Thompson, for those of you that don't know, uh, here at Country States Baptist Church. I'm doing the Youth Sunday School lesson for Sunday morning, June 28th right now. Uh, we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 3 today, uh, looking at verses 8 through 17. Uh, so just kind of a quick lead up to where we're at in that part of passage. Uh, Peter's writing to the church in Asia Minor. Uh, and he's encouraging them. So again, the church is not the building. The church is the group of believers that's in that area. So he's writing to them and encouraging them with, uh, with their faith, with their walk, and what that church needs to be doing. And so previous to where we're going to be starting today, uh, Peter had recently talked about how Christians should act in relationship to other uh, non-believers. So how they should set an example for Christ and their different relationships, whatever that might be. And so after he goes through all that... Um, the one that he most recently hit on was wives and husbands. Uh, this is a common chapter you'll hear uh, at a lot of weddings a lot of times. They'll talk about the beginning part of 1 Peter chapter 3. Uh, funny thing is, whenever I looked up to see what was talked about before this on my phone, uh, there's you know there's little advertisements online, and the advertisement was actually for engagement rings. Not because I'm looking for an engagement ring, but I think it was because so many people that pull up this passage are looking for the, uh, the connection to a marriage. And Ooh. so... <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, like I said, that's the most recent one that he talks about is wives and husbands, especially whenever there's a wife who's a believer and the husband's not a believer, or the husband uh, whose wife is not a believer, but then even whenever they're both believers, how they should uh, act towards each other. And so he, he concludes that whole thing about different relationships and how believers should set an example. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 8, he says, Finally, all of you be like-minded and sympathetic. Love one another and be compassionate and humble, not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, giving a blessing, since you were called for this, so that you may inherit a blessing. For the one who wants to love life and to see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit, and let him turn away from evil and do what is good. Let him seek peace and pursue it, because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do what is evil. Who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear or be intimidated. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready to, at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that when you're, you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. And so, uh, again, the first part of that says, finally. So like I said, he went through a long list of how different believers, or how believers should act in their different relationships to non-believers and also to other believers. But then uh, he says, finally. So it's his kind of last, last main point on that topic. And he talks about all of you be like-minded and sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble, not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, giving a blessing since you were called to this, so you might inherit a blessing. So here he gives six, uh, six main things that uh, believers specifically should be treating other believers with. Uh, so he says, all of you to be like-minded. He's talking about the unity. Uh, the church has got to be unified. This doesn't mean that everybody has to think the exact same. Uh, like-minded does not mean that uh, we're all robots that do the exact same thing every single time. Uh, we agree on every single topic. But at least on the main topics, uh, he's saying that they need to be unified. They, they shouldn't be divided and bickering and arguing with each other. Uh, they need to be on the same page as far as what the gospel is, who God is, who Christ is, and what our general duties are as believers. Um, and so finally, be like-minded and sympathetic. Uh, so he's talking about a mutual concern. Uh, if you have someone that's uh, a believer, and really this goes for if there's somebody that's a non-believer also, but if there's something that they're struggling with, something that they're going through that's tough or difficult, be there and support them. Um, so concern for what they're going through. Uh, you take an interest in the things that matter to them. Uh, the next one is to love. Um, he says, love one another. Now, a lot of times love can be kind of twisted and people try to twist love of, well, my, my parents don't love me because they grounded me and they, they don't want me to go see my friends. And we think that that means that they don't love us. Uh, so just because someone doesn't do what you think they should do does not mean that they don't love you. Uh, sometimes they see a bigger picture. Sometimes they are outside of the the situation they're able to look into that uh, maybe you're in a bad dating relationship and you have friends or family members that are saying you know this this really isn't good 
it's not good for you, you're always in a bad mood ever since you've been with this person, something like that. Uh, the reason that they're interested and the reason why they are investing in you is because they love you. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily matter that they don't do what you, you think they should do or how they don't support what you think they should support. And so that, that one's kind of a tricky one, but it's it's where you think outside of just yourself. You're thinking about the other people around you, thinking about how it affects the long term, uh, not just what you feel or want in that moment, or what you, not just what somebody else wants or feels in that moment, but thinking about that longer picture or the bigger picture long term. Uh, the next one he says is compassionate. Uh, so this kind of, to me, goes back with the mutual concern and the love together of where, where you're taking that time to invest in other people, you care about them, uh, you're not focused on yourself. It's not all about me, 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 or you, you, you. We're focused on each other and how we can support and, uh, and grow each other. Uh, next one he says is humility. Uh, this is, uh, they actually just talked about this on the Super Summer Sunday uh, this past week when we watched that about how it's not where you think less of yourself. Oh, poor me, I'm terrible, I'm, I'm no good, nobody likes it. That's not humility, that's, that's just having a low self-esteem, uh, no confidence. Uh, it's not thinking lower of yourself, it's just thinking less often about yourself. You're not so focused on yourself, but you're focused on those other people. So that's gonna be humility. How uh, you elevate and raise other people rather than just pulling yourself down. Uh, and then the last one that he mentions is talking about forgiveness. Uh, and that one's really long in the way he goes over it, because uh, he says, not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, giving a blessing since you were called for this so that you may inherit a blessing. So it's talking about that, that forgiveness of, you know, just because I was wronged doesn't mean that I need to go out and wrong someone back, which then, um, kind of skipping ahead a little bit to uh, verse 13, whenever he says, who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear or be intimidated. Uh, this makes me think of like Rosa Parks. Uh, Rosa Parks, I can't remember the exact quote off the top of my head, uh, but she said something along the lines of, you should never be fearful about what you're doing when it is right. Um, for those of you that don't know, which you should all know, Rosa Parks, uh, it was very famous for sparking the Montgomery bus boycotts uh, back whenever the buses segregated blacks and whites. Uh, she sat in an area that was supposed to be for only whites, um, and she was told to get up and give up her seat, and she refused. Uh, and it sparked Montgomery bus boycotts where uh, a lot of people across Montgomery stopped using the buses, uh, caused them to lose a lot of money in order to get it, bring about change. And so she says, you shouldn't be afraid of doing what's right uh, just because of those consequences. And so I, I feel like that, that's, she, she took that from this concept, this scriptural concept of just because someone wrongs me doesn't mean I need to wrong them back. Uh, having that forgiveness, being able to move past it again, not just thinking about myself and what I think I'm owed, but thinking about the bigger picture and how I can show other people love, especially if I was wronged by a non-believer. How much more impact does my forgiveness have on them in their heart rather than retaliating and going back at them? Makes me think of a movie called The Gridiron Game with the Dwayne, the, with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He's not the Dwayne. He's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Um, he, he's working at this um, juvenile detention center and uh, there's these kids in there that they're, they're from different gangs outside of the jail, and so they bring in their gang rivalries, and they're constantly fighting with each other inside, and he's trying to make a football team and trying to unite them, and, and he's sitting there, and at one point he points out, he's like, you don't even know why you hate each other. This, this history has been going so long, you don't even know what started it. You don't know why you're supposed to hate them. You just know that you hate them. And so people just get caught up in that a lot of times where we don't really even remember why we don't like this person or why we don't get along with that person. We just remember, well, I don't like them because they did this to me. Well, maybe what'd you do to them first? A lot of times things go so far back where it was just little things that just gradually built up until it's escalated into a big situation and a bigger issue. How much more powerful is that forgiveness? And you know what? They wronged me, but I'm going to rise above that. I'm not going to repay evil for evil. You know, they, they talked bad about me. I'm, I'm still going to speak the truth. I'm still going to stick to what I know I believe. And I'm still going to treat them with kindness regardless of how they treat me. And it talks in here about, um, it says uh, that, um, the, uh, the blessing, sorry, losing my, losing my page a little bit. Um, he talks about, you know, not giving uh, evil for evil, uh, insult for insult, but to give a blessing instead. Uh, and he said, since you are called for this, so that you may inherit a blessing. So there's so much more for you if you rise above that situation. Uh, and it, again, in the uh, part about 1 Peter 3, 13 through 14, whenever it says, 
But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Uh, again, we're in, a lot of times our culture puts us in the mindset of, you know what, I'm, I'm wrong, so I had to get even. I'm going to let you guys know right now, there's, there's no such thing as just getting even. Because whenever someone did something small to you, and you think you're going to get even with them, well, now they think you wronged them, so they're just going to step it up a notch, and then you're going to step it up a notch. Nobody really ever gets even. Um, and so that forgiveness. Uh, and so in that last part, 15 through 17, but in your hearts, so there's that English, that, uh, that flip, that opposite right there, but in your hearts, regard Christ as the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you. So if you're a believer, you have that hope in Christ, whenever you're in these troubling situations, whenever you're at these points where there's uh, disagreements or discord with other people, you have the opportunity in those moments to rise above and, you know, realize this situation I'm in right now is temporary. It's not the big picture. It's not going to last. But what is going to last is eternal life with Jesus Christ. And you have a moment, or in those moments, you have that chance, you have that opportunity to be able to speak truth into those people's lives and be like, hey, you know what? I, I know you do this to me, but I forgive you. Uh, Christ has forgiven me of my sins whenever I've committed against him and he's perfect and I'm not perfect. So instead of having that mindset where I'm, you owe me or I'm entitled to something, realizing that I'm not perfect, yet Christ forgave me, I can forgive you for your imperfections as well. I, I shouldn't be someone to hold those over you whenever, again, I'm also sinful. I've also messed up. I've also uh, wronged people before. And so it gives us a great opportunity to point to Jesus Christ in those situations as an example of, hey, I'm forgiving you, not necessarily because you deserve it, but I don't deserve the forgiveness that Christ gave me either. And again, it's that humility. It's that it's not necessarily thinking, oh, poor me, I'm, I'm terrible, but it's bringing other people up in a lot of senses, elevating them, giving them more respect. Uh, and so the last part of that in uh, verse 17, for it is be better to suffer for doing good if you, or if it should be God's will than for doing evil. So guys, I encourage you, don't, don't get caught in the mindset of, well, I have to get even. I, this person owes me this. Sometimes you got to take a step back outside of what you think you deserve, your entitlement sometimes. Take a step back and look at the bigger picture and realizing things that are worth it, things that aren't worth it, and also looking for ways to point to Christ in those moments. Uh, that's all I've got. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, have a great week.